everyone knows that Pierre Poilievre supported the blockade. And I don't, know, I don't care how much spin you put into it. Here is someone who makes laws and says, I can break laws because I'm above the law. Well, I'm sorry. If you want to be a leader of a party, if you want to sit in the House of Commons and make laws, you have to obey them. And if you say to Canadians, I want to be the leader of the Conservative Party and I want to be the chief legislator of the country, but I don't have to obey the laws, I'm sorry. That's not just a failure in leadership. It disqualifies you as far as I'm concerned, as being someone who thinks or aspires to be a leader of a party. Okay, welcome to the Conservative Leadership Race. Pierre Paul Ever should be disqualified from the Conservative race because of his support of the, of the uh, trucker convoy earlier this year. That's what fellow uh, leadership candidate Jean Charest told me on CTV's question period yesterday. Jean Charest is a liberal who should be disqualified from the leadership race because he worked for Huawei during the two Michaels crisis. Pierre Polyever shot back, and so goes the escalating rhetoric between the Charest camp and the Polyever camp. Now, there are 12 camps, 12 leadership campaigns madly scrambling to sign up new members before the deadline is up. They have eight more days to sign up members. The candidates then have until April 29th to come up with 300,000 bucks to make sure that they're on the ballot. But are all these allegations accurate? The so-called Freedom Convoy did lay siege to the downtown Ottawa uh, area for weeks while also stalling trade by blocking key international border crossing in Windsor and Coots, Alberta. Originally billed as a protest against the vaccine mandates for truckers, it obviously became a magnet for many other messages. Uh, the mayor of Ottawa, the police chief, the premier of Ontario, all call, and the prime minister all called the protest illegal. M Mr. Polyever did say on February 10th he's proud of the truckers and he stands with them, but does that really qualify him from running? Does Mr. Charest's work for Huawei, which he's talked about on this program, really mean he shouldn't run for the leadership? Well, let's bring in two people from each camp. Jenny Byrne, CEO of Jenny Byrne & Associates, conservative strategist, former advisor to Stephen Harper, and now working as a key advisor on the Pierre Paul Ever leadership campaign team, and Tasha Carradin, principal at Navigator and the co-chair of the Jean Charest leadership campaign. Uh, great to have both of you here. Uh, let me start with you, Jenny Byrne. Uh, you saw the interview that I did with Mr. Charest on Sunday. He said Mr. Paul Ever, in his view, supported illegal blockades and that he, quote, you can't break laws, to use his words, because he says Pierre Paul Ever thinks he's above the law and should be disqualified. Your response. Well, I think that's ridiculous. I, I, it's hard for me to understand why Jean Charest is even running for leader of the Conservative Party, because he seems to dislike uh, every member of the Conservative Party. You, you've got a, a party uh, that it overwhelmingly supported the Freedom uh, Convoy. Uh, you have caucus members, including our interim leader, Candace Bergen. I'd like to know if Jean Charest thinks that she's not capable or uh, credible to run uh, as, and, and, and also disputes the the hundred the thousands and thousands of Canadians across the country uh, over the last three months that supported that uh, you know mr. Polyev's Pierre's uh, and uh, Pierre's speeches and our events and uh, where we're we're selling memberships have have drawn close to 20,000 people in the last two weeks and so I think it's going to be very hard for Jean Charest, someone who recently joined the, the party the same as Tasha um, uh, recently joined the <laughs> to be able to say that uh, that that this is not what the Conservative Party is uh, is looking for. Tasha Carradine. <laughs> yes, Evan. Well, where to start? Um, you know, uh, the history of Jean Charest with the Conservative Party and its predecessor, the Progressive Conservative Party, goes back as far as mine, actually a bit farther, almost 35 years, because he was there on the front lines during the uh, government of Brian Mulroney. That's where I got to know him. That's one of the reasons I'm supporting him for leader, because he has a deep understanding of what conservatism is in this country, what it can do, how to achieve great things like the free trade agreement and the other projects that were achieved, the acid rain treaty, for example, under Brian Mulroney's government. He's also run a province. And yes, he was a liberal in Quebec. I know, Jenny, you're going to come out with that one, but there was no Conservative Party at the time. Uh, I guess, you know, Christy Clark was a liberal in British Columbia. Conservatives pretty much lay claim to a lot of what she did, too, because at the time there was no Conservative Party in the province. But, 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 and but Tasha, the party represented the, the center-right. So, 
if I can just say, I, I think a lot of the, the attacks, listen, Russia, a lot of the attacks that you launch on Josh Ray as to why he's running, he's running because he firmly believes that this country needs another national party to govern it. And the direction that you're espousing, and yes, that some members of the Conservative Party do espouse currently, is not a direction that is going to take us to a majority government. And it's hard to argue with that. I mean, you get crowds. Yes, you've got thousands of people. So did Maxime Bernier in the last election, and he got 5% of the vote. So quite frankly, I think if you want an opening, look at what's happened with the NDP Liberal Coalition. It's given us an excellent opening on the Senate to write to pull in voters who feel now they have no home even with the Liberal Party and no home in a Conservative Party, though, that would veer as far right as you would take it. So why don't we go to the place with a leader who can attract enough people to actually get us into office and make the good things happen we need to for this country? Right. Well, I Jenny, would say... Go ahead. Well, I would say I find this all ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not sure where uh, Tash is getting her information from in terms of uh, what Canadians are, are looking for it now. The, the modern Conservative Party, something that a party that she just joined herself in the last couple months, um, uh, governed half of the last 20 years, 10 of the last 20 years. Stephen Harper was prime minister uh, for that time, a time where uh, uh, Pierre Polyev was, represented a suburban uh, seat in Ontario for 17 years of that. Well, her candidate, Jean Charest, actually campaigned against us. I, I remember working in the 2008 war room uh, when, uh, well, you can you can giggle about it, Tasha, but I remember Jean Charest actually campaigning against caucus members that we have, like uh, Jacques Gourde, who is still in caucus, campaigning against us in terms of uh, in terms of policy. So we, you can giggle all you want, you can make light of it, but the fact of the matter is, if you want to look at the modern conservative movement, let me finish, uh, in terms of what the, what the candidates are talking about, I think Jean Charest is completely disconnected from not just what conservative voters want, but from what Canadians are looking for now as well. They don't want another, they do not want another uh, uh, Justin Trudeau. And right now, that's exactly uh, what he is offering uh, to the Conservative Party membership. Well, I well, don't know where Tasha, you're getting your information. Yeah, can, uh, sorry, Evan, I, if you want to ask a question, but I'd like to respond you know, to that. I, I, I know, no, not, I'd love you guys I'm, to respond, but, but can you just also pick up on why Mr. Shrey said he should, this is a strong word, he should be disqualified from running. I'm just, uh, is that a serious question that they, you literally think that he should be, or is that a, a metaphorical use, like he shouldn't, people, he's not a credible candidate, or you actually think he should be disqualified? I think it's a, it's a metaphorical use in the sense of saying that if you're going to govern a country and if you're going to be a parliamentarian, that your first duty is, of course, is to uphold the laws of the land. You make those laws, you debate those laws, and you uphold those laws. And, you know, I find it very interesting because I'm, I'm trying to picture what would have happened under Stephen Harper if you'd had an occupation of downtown Ottawa for three weeks, as we saw with the convoy. Would that have gone on as long? And, you know, Jenny, you were there. Stephen Harper was an extremely strong leader. He took strong decisions, unlike Justin Trudeau, of course. I, and, you know, to equate Josh Ray with Justin Trudeau is laughable, too. Josh Ray is the reason that we're sitting here. Without him in the 1995 referendum, which the, the no side won, by the way, by less than half a percent, uh, we wouldn't have a country to even be talking about. He took on himself to get involved in that campaign, to stand for Canada. That is why he's presenting himself this time around. And that is an achievement that you cannot take away from him. To diminish his involvement in the party currently, because he was not a member of the party, per se, because he was doing other things. Yeah, he was running a province. Uh, you know, I think that also well, is a bit ridiculous. Ten, for the last 10 years, he, he was working for Huawei. He wasn't running a province. Well, yeah, your, last... your candidates never worked for anyone except the government, frankly. So he's always been on the taxpayer's dime. Well, Josh Ray worked for, for a law firm. Josh Ray worked for in the private yeah. sector. I think private sector experience is excellent. Let me address Huawei, because I find that very interesting, yeah. too. Josh Ray was on Tout le monde en parle last night, and in French, um, so you may not have watched. It. He was very, very clear about his stance on Huawei and his stance that he would have never worked for a company that he felt was not in the interests of Canada. And he says, yeah, things have changed. He would ban 5G. He's been very clear. He would ban five, Huawei from the 5G network. The work he did was it to bring the two Michaels home. It was to make a deal, yeah. yes, because someone had to that represent not, Huawei or they wouldn't have come home. Ask me, ask me. Okay, hold on, let, let me get Jenny. Let me just get Jenny to respond to that. Sure. Go ahead, Jenny. Abby, 
That is, Tasha, that's not true. He was hired by Huawei to actually do 5G. How we know that is because that is what, what Huawei has confirmed. He was not hired no, that's by Huawei. Ali, that's what Ali Khan Velchi of Huawei said, yes. Um, anyway, I will just say I mean, that I Josh Sheree has been very clear as to his involvement. Okay, his well, I can't involvement. hear you both, guys. I, I, t Tasha, hold on. Which no, was Tasha. to bring I'm going to take a break, but I want you to know that. that's not true. Tasha, you're actually lying. What you're doing right now is lying. I'm lying. Um, Josh wow. Hired that's what your candidate says to you. guys have been so negative during this campaign. It's really Gosh, unfortunate we've had to take the gloves off at this Gosh, point. You guys, you guys called for, okay. for Pierre to like be disqualified. You are lying right You've now. You've been attacking Squally our candidate from the very beginning. You expect, I guess, I guess the thing is, Jenny, when you start scorched earth, okay, then eventually on, you're going to get it back. On, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate Gosh, you brought the okay, candidate got, to this point. We one. cannot, Gosh, our, the viewer you saying, can't hear you both. You so you, here's what I'm going to do. Hold on, Jenny, Jenny and Tash, who I know both very well, um, this is a, an important debate, and I want the audience to hear. So well, let me just take, do this. Let me take a short break. These are important points. I'm going to let each of you speak. Believe me, we've got time, so you'll both be able to make their points. Um, where is all this going? Look, there's eight days to sign up as a member. The first debates have just been um, assembled and, and, and secured in May. As Steph Levitz of the Toronto Star, by the way, broke that story. So we're going to talk more with Tasha and Jenny Byrne in, in a minute, so stay with us. Lots more to come on Power Play. We'll take a short break and be right back. The debates for the conservative leadership race have just been set. There will be a debate May 11th in Edmonton, May 25th in Montreal. There's going to be another one in August. Again, credit to Steph Levitz of the Toronto Star who broke that. It's happening quickly. In five months, conservatives will choose their leader. Hopeful candidates have basically only eight more days to sign up members for the race. It's a crowded race. There's a 12 campaigns. But it's this open debate between the Charest camp and the Polyevra camp that has dominated the headlines. Mr. Charest telling me on CTV's question period that Mr. Polyevra supported the trucker protests and his attack on the Bank of Canada should disqualify him. Mr. Polyevra has hit back saying Mr. Charest is a liar and a liberal and a guy who worked for Huawei and took money from Huawei during the two Michaels captivity. Do negative attacks work? And what does this say about the race? Uh, conservative campaign insiders, Jenny Byrne, Jenny, CEO of Jenny Byrne and Associates, and a, and a key strategist for Pierre Polyever joins us. Uh, and also Tasha Carradine, principal of Navigator and co-chair of the Charest campaign, joins us. Okay, uh, you guys both have lots to say. Um, and I'm going to go back to you, Jenny. Um, after Mr. Pauly, after Mr. Charest said Pierre Polyever should be uh, disqualified for his support of what he calls the illegal uh, blockades. But Mr. Pauly ever has hit back and dismissed Mr. Charest as a liberal and, and, and a liar um, and, and talked about his work for, for Huawei. But does that alienate Jenny Byrne, not just Mr. Charest, but saying he's a liberal or Mr. Brown's a liberal, does that alienate potential voters for the Conservative Party should Mr. Pauly ever win? Well, I, I don't think it does. The fact of the matter is, is Jean Charest uh, was a liberal. He was a liberal premier for a decade. He also campaigned against Stephen Harper, the conservative prime minister of the day. He supported policies like the long gun registry, uh, for example, the $2 billion boondoggle, which Tasha has talked publicly about it being a boondoggle um, and being a waste of money. So he also uh, led a scandal ridden government that uh, had to pay back uh, and a party that had to pay back uh, thousands of dollars to uh, elections Quebec. Tasha's also said that uh, it, she, she, she has said in the past that John Charest had a scandal-ridden government. And so I think all of this is fair game. It was it was uh, Mr. Polyev uh, responded. Pierre re responded when uh, Jean Charest came out yesterday and said that he shouldn't be allowed to run because he supported a movement which thousands upon thousands of Canadians across the country uh, supported. But I just want to go back to, Evan, the Huawei stuff. Uh, Tasha, you, you, you can't be saying with a straight face that Jean Charest was hired to negotiate a release for, for the two Michaels on behalf of Huawei um, because he was hired uh, by, uh, he was hired by uh, Huawei for, to uh, advocate for 5G. So if what you're saying is different, I would call on uh, Jean Charest and I would call him McCarthy Tetro to release the the, the uh, details of his contract. Was it 50000 Was it 75000 Was it $100,000 a month that Jean Charest and McCarthy Tetro were paid uh, to represent Huawei? All right. uh, um, Tash, that's going to come up again. And I know yeah, I have asked Mr. Charest about that. He said, he. Well, so what's the response to that? Well, the response is twofold. First of all, Mr. Charest has been very clear 
but he was hired to bring Huawei to the table in terms of the discussions of the release. He wasn't, he was not, yes, he was, it wasn't a question of Huawei saying, yes, let's release. It was a question that they had to be at the table to discuss this. He was representing their interests there. And in terms of, you know, getting out contracts and this kind of thing, um, you know as well as I do, Jenny, that law firms have confidentiality with their clients. They're not going to release contracts. They're not going to do that. And you're calling on that. It's just the same kind of stuff that your candidate says about slamming things, institutions like the Bank of Canada. Canada, saying that Bitcoin, you know, we're going to make Canada the crypto capital of the world. The kinds of stuff that sounds, it's a nice little soundbite, but when you really dig down, it means absolutely nothing. And in fact, it's often disinformation. You know, I find it very interesting, particularly these attacks on the Bank of Canada that Pierre Polyev has, because we know that in the 2008 financial crisis, when your candidate was part of the Harper government, one of the reasons the country weathered that crisis so well was the leadership of the Bank of Canada, when Stephen Harper had to run up huge deficits, by the way, to deal with that crisis. And Canada came through that really well, thanks to the leadership of the Bank of Canada. And I didn't hear now Pierre Polyev complaining leadership. about it then. Um, it was thanks it was to the leadership of both, yes, the government, government, but also the, the policies of the bank, which maintain stability in this country. That's what the bank does. Okay. You know, I don't think most can most Canadians want to go and buy things with crypto the way your, your candidate's encouraging them to do. When you even have okay. economists, when you even had Kevin O'Leary recently saying it's an investment, but it is it's a speculative investment. It is not something you use as a currency. It is something you hold in your portfolio. Most Canadians don't get that, but okay. your candidate doesn't make the difference. So, so let, me, it's hang on. let me let, get, let me get Jenny Byrne to respond to that. Uh, Jenny Byrne, respond to that. I know Mr. Chere was talking about that, and maybe explain what Mr. Pauly ever meant. And you know, cryptocurrencies are obviously a big deal. Um, they're popular. They may or may not be regulated. Obviously, there's lots of debate about it. What did he mean when he told people that through Bitcoin or other cryptos, people might have the opportunity to opt out of inflation. The Bank of Canada, former Bank of Canada governor, told me he didn't think that was possible. What did he mean by that? Well, I think what, what Pierre is, is talking about when he's talking about crypto, it's modernization. I, I know there's going to be a lot of bureaucrats in the Bank of Canada that uh, that that, sh that that are not that do not think this is popular, but this is something where there is a large segment of the world's population, not just Canada's population, uh, that is looking in terms of uh, cryptocurrencies, is, is looking towards uh, Bitcoin, and and I know in terms of uh, the people that are coming out to Pierre's events, this is a big issue for some of them, and 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 Tasha, I know you've written extensively about the need for the Conservative Party of Canada to. Uh, to rejuvenate itself, to actually to modernize itself. And I would say that this policy issue, uh, this discussion that we're having is doing just that. There is a whole segment of the population that are Gen Zers uh, and also people that have never been involved in a political party. They're coming out to meet Pierre and to speak with him uh, regarding his position on uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Yeah, when I was talking about modernization, I didn't envision the future potential Prime Minister of Canada sitting there smoking shisha and talking Bitcoin about how wonderful it was for, you know, half an hour on video as your candidate did, which I, you know, find very curious because it's the kind of thing that a lot of people look at and go, wait a minute, uh, wh what are you literally smoking? The information he's given on Bitcoin has led people to think that it is just some kind of alternative currency when we know it is actually the most used means of cyber extortion in the world. Crimes and scams of Bitcoin are going up and up and up as well in this country. That you don't talk about. You don't talk about regulating it. You know, Michelle Garner, Ramp Rampel Garner came out with a bill about regulation of crypto. That's a different thing. And we're going to have some policy things as well, because it's Yes, you need to to look at issues that come up, but to simply throw it around because you know it'll get people to vote for you uh, from a certain segment is really disingenuous. It's not what the Conservative Party is about. It's not what Canada is about. This race should be about finding and building a party that can appeal to enough people to get a majority government in the next election. And that is not what you're doing, but that is what John Charest is I doing. Okay, I got uh, 30 seconds for you, Jenny, and then I got to call it, but I can, I'll have you both back anytime, as you both know. Uh, Jenny, you want to just respond? No, well, listen, I think that we're, we're the, the, this race, is, we are going to see, uh, uh, this race is showing that the policies and the 
views that Pierre Polyev have are very exciting, not just to Conservative Party members, but also to Canadians. The vast majority of people that are coming out to our events um, are, are not Conservative Party members. They're signing up. Uh, they're, they're signing up. Tasha may not know that because, of course, she hasn't been to a Conservative Party event um, in the last 15 years. But these are people that are not regularly coming out to the events. We're, we're getting Conservative Party members, mm -hmm. but we're also getting new members that we're signing up. And so I think that we are going to see the excitement uh, right up until the day the, the uh, uh, membership cutoff on June 3rd uh, and then right into the uh, right into the election day uh, when we find out who wins on uh, September 10th. It's exciting all right. Okay, we have yeah. 1,500 volunteers across the country. We have 1,500 people oh, who are get, signing okay. up members every day, 400 other volunteers. We, we're very okay. excited about this too because we really think okay. it's going to be a great race and in the end that we're going to win. And there, and, well, there's 10 other campaigns. Uh, listen, uh, Tasha, Jenny Byrne, Always a pleasure to have both of you on. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Your candor uh, and your advocacy for your own candidates. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Evan.